Hi y'all. I want to make a video today about bus bars and flexible bus bars versus rigid bus bars. Uh, there have been a lot of discussions lately and some videos made lately and I want to do some testing and see what we're really looking at. I was setting up my, my battery here and reading the BMS information from Seplos and they make a very strong point of the importance of the uh, resistance in the bus bars and what that can do to the BMS's ability to balance and manage the battery pack. Uh, they actually test the resistance between the positive and negative side of the bus bar between cells eight and nine, and they use that to calibrate the BMS for the resistance of all the bus bars. They make the assumption that that bus bar is the same as the others, and they use that to, um, to make their calculation for how to manage the battery. Um, I don't know, I have not read of any other BMSs that do that, but I know that it is important for all the BMSs that the bus bars have low resistance, just like we want our cells to have low resistance. So, I've done some testing in the past and it, it opened my eyes to the possibility that we are uh, doing things that, we don't, that we're not really aware of. So, I decided to do some testing and of some different size bus bars, different types of bus bars. As you might know, if you've watched some of my other videos, uh, the big batch of batteries that I bought not long ago came with brass bus bars. Brass has 28% of the conductivity of copper. So, you know, four times as much of electricity flows through copper as flows through brass with the same amount of resistance. So these are brass bus bars. And if you test these brass bus bars, I get 16, 15, 17 milliohms. And that's right about center of stud to center of stud. Now, that's a brass bus bar. This is a copper bus bar over here. In my solar generator, I've got better cells, but I also have copper bus bars. And if you check these bus bars out, That's measuring 0 0.05, 0 0.06 milliohms, right around there. So almost four times as much for the brass bus bars, which is not good. One other thing I wanna check. If I measure the cells themselves on the terminal, and then that has to go up into the bus bar and come across, there I'm getting 17, 0.17, sorry, 0.17 milliohms, 0.16 milliohms. That's a substantial amount more than the bus bar itself, which was 0.06 or 0.05. So, so there is resistance that happens in that connection, which is why we want to use a con a conductive paste when we put it together to try to minimize that and make sure we have a good torque on it. So now, if we come over here, back to this brass bus bar, instead of 0 0.06, here we have 0.18. And instead of 0.21, I think we measured over there from terminal to terminal, here we have 0.49 so you've got the additional resistance in the bus bar but you're also not making as good of a connection between there and the terminal now there's an important point I want to make this is pretty popular this this distance is different than these common bus bars you can't just use one across there because it's a longer distance so many people take a four gauge wire or something similar to that 
to make a flexible bus bar. Now, that's a four gauge flexible bus bar. It's got a double crimp on both of the tinned copper lugs. I, I couldn't have done a better job of making that lug, I don't believe. And then this is a piece of a brass bus bar. So if we go on top of that brass bus bar, right at the terminal, I have 0.26 milliohms. If I just go right on to wire, I have 0.21 milliohms. So that four gauge wire with good crimps has more resistance than this brass bus bar, which I find to be totally unacceptable. And yet we're using these and they're even worse. Now, when I go from terminal to terminal, I have 0.42. That tells me 0 0.43, 0 0.44, 0 0.45. That tells me that even though this has more resistance in the wire, it's making a better connection because it's a tinned copper lug. It's making a better connection between there and the cell. S still though, the total resistance 0.45 and with a copper bus bar, the total resistance 0.21, that's just unacceptable. That's basically just coming from the additional resistance in that four gauge wire. So if we're gonna have flexible bus bars, I don't think four gauge wire is adequate. I think we have to have bigger wire than that. So let's see what we can do to improve on it. This is two gauge wire. And if you check the resistance on this two gauge wire, well, that's 0 0.09 milliohms. That is much better than this four gauge wire at 0 0.20 milliohms. And this is a little bit longer. This four gauge wire, it definitely has some resistance just in the wire, but it also there's distance involved. But if I just check right at the wire itself, not even the distance of the lugs. That wire itself is 0.15 milliohms. Four gauge wire just has a lot of resistance in it because it doesn't have the sectional, cross-sectional area of this copper bus bar. That copper bus bar is two millimeters by 20 millimeters. That's a cross-sectional area of 40 millimeters. This four gauge wire is, oh man, remember the number, right? Come on. Well, let me just check my chart right here. That four gauge wire has a cross-sectional area of 21 square millimeters. So, half the sec cross-sectional area of that bus bar and maybe twice as good as the brass bus bar because that brass bus bar that is the same cross-sectional area has one-fourth of the carrying capacity or four times the resistance. So it has the equivalent of 10 square millimeters. Now, this is a batch of batteries that I'm top balancing right now. And at the end of each one, of each row, I have these jumpers. And these are four gauge jumpers. Longer. And when I measure these four gauge jumpers, just on top here, I get 25.25 milliohms. So that's substantially more than the, if you recall the, the bus bars over there, they were 0 0.06, 0 0.05 milliohms. These brass bus bars, again, are like 
0.16 milliohms. Three and a half times as much as that bus bar. Now, over here, I have made a jumper out of one aught wire. The one aught wire is what I'm using for most of the battery build that I'm doing here on this system. So I just put one together, and it's not bent. It doesn't have a lot of flexibility. It was very critical that I get it just right for this distance. But on top of this, <laughs> what do you want to call it? It's not a flexible bus bar. It's not very flexible. But when I measure on top of it, I get, well, it's jumping around a little bit. Point. Point zero six, point zero seven, point zero. It's pretty similar to a brass bus bar. The cross sectional area of one aught wire. Let me just check. Hold on a second, y'all. The cross sectional area of one aught wire is fifty three millimeters. So just slightly more than the uh, copper bus bar, which is 40 square millimeters, but it has these lugs and there's some complication in it. So it's very similar though to, the, um, to a copper bus bar. So if you're trying to replace one of these standard copper bus bars, that are two millimeters by 20 millimeters with a piece of wire cable with lugs, you need to go to one aught, not number four, not number two, not number one. Now, underneath, from terminal to terminal, I'm measuring 0.19. Uh, I saw it jump to 0 0.20, but 0 0.19, which if you recall, the copper bus bar from terminal the terminal was 0 0.20 or 0 0.21. So this is what it takes to be the equivalent of a copper bus bar, one aught, with a solid crimp made by a 16 ton crimper. It's just, it's almost just doing the math of the wire size, but four gauge isn't it. And when you get four gauge wire and you start running long loops of four gauge wire, you're creating a tremendous amount of resistance compared to solid copper bus bars. And I, I hear a lot of concern about solid copper, copper bus bars and the um, movement in RVs or uh, vehicles, boats, that kind of thing. And I understand that concern. I really do. However, I'm looking at all of the manufactured battery packs that are out there and I don't see any of them. Not a single manufacturer is using flexible cable type bus bars to put their battery packs together. Almost all of them are using solid bus bars with welding. There's just no flexibility at all. So whatever stress is going on those terminals is being put on the on the terminals into the cells, but they restrain the battery cells so that they're not moving. And I have not heard of any failures in any of those commercial battery packs because of movement in vehicles. And these battery packs are being used in RVs that are going, you know, rather off-road. Um, last thing I want to show you is different sizes of wire. This is 10 millimeter wire. It is the same as a round eight gauge wire. This is 16 millimeter wire, and it is the same as somewhere around four gauge wire. This is four gauge welding wire. You can see the cross sectional area. It's not that big, 
kind of like a number two pencil. This is number two. And this is the one aught. So this is what is required to match the resistance of a copper bus bar in a similar length. And this is what most people, myself included, have been using. So I'll be replacing my four gauge jumper with one odd. Especially since the BMS I'm using takes whatever that jumper is and uses it to manage the resistance in all of the bus bars. Now, right now, the batteries I have are put together with brass bus bars, which will be replaced soon because the copper bus bars are on their way. So right now I'm gonna leave that because it's actually four gauge works with brass bus bars, but I'm not using the battery to uh, do any significant drains, uh, amperage drains or amperage charging. But before I do that, I will have to replace those bus bars with copper bus bars and replace the jumper at the end with a one aught lug, which will be very tricky to put together because that's tricky. And I tried doing it with a bent one, you know, to where it had some flexibility, but that one aught cable on that kind of distance just wasn't really going to work. So that's all I have for you today. I just wanted to get this out. Um, been a little rainy and good day to do a video. I have some more videos coming up soon. I am almost resolved my issue with the BMS, the Seplos BMS, and I'm going to give you a, a video on how that's worked out and what I think of the way that company handled that. I've got a big video coming up pretty soon about how the battery purchase, the big ba first big battery purchase went and how that is being resolved. And I have one coming up about a resolution to the burned up power supply unit that uh, is supposedly being replaced. I'm just not going to give any information until I have final resolution because I don't want to do any guessing and going back and trying to clean it up later. Thank you for watching the video. Go watch the others if you have time. Like and subscribe if you will. And I appreciate the time that you spent watching this one. Have a good day.